what you have, or sometimes having an extra bracket. Now, this might look a little different than conditions you've seen before, or not, maybe, I guess depending on your style of programming. Why don't I say if calendar visible, calendar one visible equals something? Why do I just say if calendar one dot visible? Yeah. You have to evaluate it to true or false first. Well, yeah, but this would do that, right? If I said if calendar one dot visible equals true, but I don't have equals true. I just have the words calendar one dot visible. Why don't I need to? C sharp. <laughs> no, not really. Well, it is C sharp, but that's not really why you do it. Yes. Is it reading the value that is already preset to and then? Well, yeah, but there's something specific about this value that allows us to do this. So visible is only one or the other? Right. Sure. Visible is a Boolean, right? Uh, so as a Boolean, um, it can only be true or false. All right. So if I had an integer, for example, I couldn't say if integer, you know, I have to say if integer equals 1, if integer equals 2, or something like that. Another way to put it is the condition that's included in the parentheses has to evaluate to true or false. Has to be true or false. No yes, no, maybe, no, anything like that. It's either true or it's false. Now, calendar one dot visible is already a Boolean. It's already something that's either true or false, so I don't need to put a condition in there. I could put a condition in there if I wanted to. <coughs> and say if calendar one dot visible equals true. Notice what I did there. In doing comparisons, there are two equal signs. That's a difference between Visual Basic and C Sharp. There's really, in programming, there's two purposes for the equal sign. All right? There is uh, an equal sign uh, that is used to assign a value to a variable. For example, here, I'm saying take this thing, set it equal to false. Take this thing, set it equal to show. For assignment, single equal signs are used. For comparisons, in other words, is this equal to true, or is this equal to one, or is this less than, or um, less than isn't a good example, is this equal to Zeller's, or whatever, you use the two equal signs. So if I was going to explicitly write out the comparison, I would have to say equal, equal, true. So like, say if you wanted to, instead of checking the Boolean, if you wanted to check, like, say, what the button says, if the button says hide or show, you would have to use the double equal sign. You have to use a double equal sign, yeah. Um, I know you just said that for an example, but you testing the visibility attribute is the better one because yeah, if someone decided they wanted to change the verbiage for that, that's going to break your code, where the, the, right. the visible invisible is always going to be true. All right. What I want to do now, with we have about 10 minutes left, I want to introduce you to some of the other controls in .NET. And I have posted the second lab assignment, you know, if you, um, if you want uh, something to work on. And we'll talk more about this on Thursday. And I'm going to create another page. Oops. I'm going to create another web form, and I'm going to call it data entry, because we're going to allow them to enter some data into a form. And I'm going to go in to design view, and I'm going to put a couple of controls on here. Now, we're not going to have time to go over all these, but I want to introduce this to you and talk a little bit about the validation controls. So I'm going to go and add a text box here. 
So I'll go add my text box. I'm going to go add a button here. And if I run this, I can type something in here, click the button to submit, and really nothing really happens, but it sort of did its thing, right? It remembers what values I put in there as it resubmits and redisplays the page. So it does remember state. Now, what if I don't put anything in there? That's fine. What if I put letters in instead of numbers? That's fine too. All right. In HTML, text boxes are just that. You can put any text in them. All right. Now we know if we want to develop a good form, we need to do some sort of validation. All right. Ideally, the validation we want to do on the client side. Why? Well, because the user then will get the immediate notification if there's a problem with the form. doesn't have to wait to make it all the way across to the server and come back. Right? It's much nicer if as soon as they click that button, boom, it pops up saying you forgot to enter something. Now, how many web forms out there need validation? Every single one of them, right? I can't really think of a case of there being a web form where there's no validation needed at all. If you think a login form, there's validation needed. Uh, a comment form, there's validation needed. There's validation needed everywhere. All right? And so, there are components in the .NET framework that sort of, again, give you a head start. And there's any number of validation controls. Now, any of you that have done JavaScript, you could write your own validation code. I'm confident that all of you could. But... You know, that's something everyone does. It would take up a lot of time if you had to do all that yourself. So instead, you can use the validation controls. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and grab a validation control. Now, there's a bunch of these, and you can take the time to explore them on your own. Uh, we will talk about them in class, but today I just want to talk about the required required field validator. So I'm going, to go, I'm going to go drag that on my form. And I'm going to put an error message. Must enter a value. And then I'm going to go and say what control I'm validating. And I'm validating my text box. All right. I haven't really defined what that text box is for, so I'm not going to give too descriptive of an error message. But again, I identify that that's a control I validate. What did right? you select there? I can't read that. This? The book that's highlighted with blue. Oh, it says control to validate. I have to say which item on my form I want to validate. So I want to validate this text box, and that is text box one. I could have a bunch of text box, right? I could have a name and phone number. And maybe the name's required, but the phone number isn't. So I would put a required field validator on the name, but I would put no validator then on the phone. All right. So now when I run this, if I don't put anything in there and I try to submit it, I get an error message. And it's kind of hard to tell but I get that error message immediately. It didn't go back to the web server. All right? It's doing client-side JavaScript validation to pop up that error message immediately. And then the server's not burdened trying to process data where critical items are missing. And the client doesn't have to wait for it to go through the Internet to come back and um, get their error message. The error message displays immediately. A lot of what we'll do next time will be exploring this, all right? Exploring the different input controls, because we just talked about text box here, but there's other kinds of input controls. And talking about the different kinds of validators, then talking about how we can use those controls in doing some processing. Yes? I think I missed something. Did it automatically give you that must enter value, or did you tell it? I went in when I created the validate uh, when I created the validator control. 
I went in to the properties and set the error message to must enter a value. I did two things with the validator. I, I typed in the error message that I wanted, so I said must enter a value, and then I de defined what control this validation is associated with. So I could have 10 text boxes, maybe only 10 of, or maybe only two of them are required. So I want to validate the two and leave the other ones without validation. Is it possible to just drag that error message to the front, like put those asterisks beside them, like they, like you see on some sites? Oh yeah, yeah. Really, uh, at this point, I'm only worried about functionality. Um, as we go on, we can, we can play more with the appearance of it and, and doing that. I just want to make sure we understand the principles of this. Now, in this case, what we have is we have these HTML, or I'm sorry, these ASP.NET controls generating some HTML for us along with the appropriate CSS and JavaScript to do the whole validation job for us. These validations are also such that they will work both client and server uh, mode. So if someone did have their JavaScript not enabled, these validations would happen on the server side. All right? And that way, you don't have to worry about yourself redundantly writing code. You, you know, th these execute both on the client and server side. All right, other questions? Yes? Um, is that control, is the property, uh, the visible property set to false to start? Is that why you don't see anything before you click on the button? No. It, it's, it's invisible. You don't see anything at first because uh, until the user has clicked the button, you know, there isn't the chance that, you know, that there isn't a problem yet. So this control is smart enough to know the initial time it loads, don't display the error message. All right, so it doesn't display the error message. In fact, let's, let's go and look at that because that's a good question. If we go and run this, let's go and do a view source. We do a view source. Well, yeah, I guess it is. It is the control itself isn't set to invisible, but the HTML that was created has the error message in place, but uses CSS to set it to invisible because there's not a problem initially. Only when you go in and enter a value, click submit then the JavaScript makes it visible, to make the control visible. So to your question, it's not as though this has a property of visible or invisible. It does, but it's always set to visible. It's that the code behind this and the code that's part of the framework is smart enough to only show that error message when there's actually an error and not the first time that the page loads. Other questions? All right, we'll see you over in lab. Is it smart enough to go away once you have yeah. something? Okay. Yeah, in other words, if I go in and, all right, got an error, now I type something in, okay. I don't.